and take a deep breath. Relax your head, relax your neck, relax your shoulders, your arms and hands, relax your back, relax your chest, relax your abdomen, relax your thighs, relax your knees, Relax your calves, relax your feet. Allow your feet to connect with the energy of the earth. Feel the energy of the earth responding to you. Allow the earth's energy to move up into your body, through your feet, through your knees, your thighs, your abdomen and your chest, your hands and arms, your neck, your head and out the top of your head. And now feel the energy connecting to the cosmos, to the universal energy. And all around you sits the field the field of infinite potentials wanting to harmonize with your highest benevolent outcome. What is it that you desire for yourself? The field is there waiting for you. And take another deep breath to anchor in that intention that is coming your way. It's already here. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I'm aware of where I am and those who are in the room. Dear ones, I'd like to bring you a message that is similar but different from others that I've given before about some basic truths and perhaps even some deceptions of the old energy. All of you come from this planet, from the civilization of the time. Every single one of you has experienced what your parents have told you, what others have told you, and you've received instructions but more than that, you've received concepts and sometimes habits. I want to tell you again that everything I speak of now is moving from the darkness to the light, to resetting and reframing that which is you. Some of the things that I talk about are knee-jerk reactions that are intuitive to what you do because you've always done it. And I'm going to tell you, perhaps, it's a pitfall. And the solution to getting around it, not that difficult, if you wish. I gave you a channel not too long ago about some deceptions of some things that you learned a certain way and now they're different. I'll continue. But these are more personal. These are not necessarily for the planet, they are for you. They're for the ones listening now, for the ones in the room. And all of these are given with total compassion and honor for the struggle it takes going from one paradigm to another. I want to start with the honoring of the human being and all that you are. All of you listening now, this is an empowering message. They all are. I want to start with number one. What is your thought and your teaching on things which would seem to be competitive? 
part of what you think is competitive you call life <laughs> the right job the right place how you're seen what happens if you don't do the right thing this comes from the energy of teaching right from those you love and now I'm going to give you a postulate dear ones whereas you might have seen a system of winning and losing the new paradigm for your life is not that at all. Perhaps you've taught that for every winner there has to be a loser and that would then emulate the systems of your politics. Winner takes all every time. And you filter it down to your life and it would seem the same. Winner takes all. You either win it or you lose it. Now I want you to start reframing that dear ones. And I want you to say this, and I want you to mean this. When you're in trouble, perhaps, and you think in these terms, I'll tell you something that no one ever said to you. There is enough for everyone. There is enough for everyone. There is enough love. There is enough abundance. There is enough food. In this civilization where you are with your abilities to manifest for the wisdom that you have as an old soul, for what you've gone through, I speak to old souls now, there is enough for everyone. There is an old adage that says if one accelerates, the other one won't. It's something about the fact that there's somehow limited abundance or limited success or limited money. That is an old paradigm. It is a deception of an old energy. For you and your lives, it's not win and lose. It's win and win. This may be difficult, may be difficult for you to understand. I'm asking you to change the paradigm of your thought. In everyday life, when you see things, there's no winner and loser. There's enough for everyone. Sometimes there would be those who would tell you there's not enough for everyone. And that there would have to be some who would suffer if others had what they needed. This is an old paradigm. It has to do with linear things. It is not esoteric. It has nothing to do with the love of God, your experience. It has nothing to do with that which you are trying to do, which is accelerate into higher consciousness. All of you have that ability. There'll be no losers in this. There won't be some who accelerate and then rob energy so others can't. This is an old paradigm. That's number one. The reason we gave that is there are some here listening who still believe it and had to hear it. And the aha will be there. Really? Yes. When my partner started, He came into this bookstore. This was before Cryon. He came into this bookstore. And he looked around and he saw the plethora of books. All of the titles, all of the teachers, all of the channelers. And when we started to channel with him, one of the things that he said over and over is that there's already channeling. He says, there's no room for another book on their shelves. I've been there. Why should I then contribute to something that already is there, already exists? Why me? They have enough. And then he said the magic words that plague him to this day. He says, they're better than I am. Dear ones, this had to be reframed in his life. That there's enough for everyone. There's enough high consciousness. There's enough enlightenment. All of these things. You limit yourselves because you look around and you say, there isn't this, there isn't that, or therefore, all the things that are linear, all the things that you've been taught, including, I'm too old. This will never happen for me. <laughs> Someone had to hear that. That's old thinking. If you start to reframe this and know 
that there's enough for everyone. Your body starts to understand it, cognize it, your consciousness will broadcast it, and your life starts to change. Let me give you the premise of Cryon, which is number two. You're never alone. When my partner sat in the chair for the first time, it was frightening to him. Because what he felt was not anything that had words connected to it. He, did, he didn't hear anything. It was, it was concepts that he felt immediately sitting in the chair after he had asked Spirit, if you're there, show me. Oh, that was so dangerous. It was dangerous because we showed him and his life changed. It was dangerous because he wasn't ready for the paradigm shift that took place. But what he felt made him weep. He realized that when he sat in the chair without saying anything, without realizing anything, he felt dozens around him who loved him, holding his hands. He could feel the light that was there. He didn't know what to do with it. And so he cried. It was overwhelming. It wasn't supposed to be there. For the first time, he realized that he was never alone, had never been alone in his life. And now he walks the planet knowing this, counts on it. It's given him peace. And so I say, what about you? What have you been told is there outside of you? I want you to drop all of that just for a moment. And think again of what is there. The complexities of a multidimensional experience are exhaustive. It's too much to understand, to explain. And so we say the simplicity, you're never alone. And truly what we mean by that is that you can't be. You're designed to be with a group. Don't get linear. Don't name the group. Oh, how many? Where are they from? What's their name? <coughs> the group is part of your soul. It has to be. If you are multidimensional, you are not part of of just one thing. You're part of many things. The soul you think is one is many. It has to be. That is the attribute of being multidimensional. It's many yous, if that helps. In many dimensions, if that helps. The group may be you with you, but it's a group. Somehow it's together as one, and many ways it is a part as helpers. What if I told you that your guides were you? Would that diminish them to you? You're never alone. I want you to know that. Because many of you feel you are. When you're done with this meeting or this recording, and you go to a place in your house, perhaps, and you want to feel alone, you can't. Go ahead, try it. We'll be there to disturb you. <laughs> you cannot be alone. You can go into the woe is me. You can do all of the things. You can cry that nobody loves you. And the entourage will just stand around you until you come out of it. <laughs> We're all there. We have gone through everything you've gone through, dear ones. Not just you with you, not the multidimensional parts of your soul, but the connection you have to spirit, to God, to all the other souls. Can you imagine how many people are in that room alone with you? <laughs> I invite you right now to cognize this, to feel it, to understand it. So the next time you might go into that depressive state, wondering why you are who you are, why don't you listen for the answer? When the group of lifts you and wants to light a match, like they do in some concerts, 
or through the audience, you will see all the matches raised in song. I want you to see that in your standing in the middle of the arena and everyone is singing your name. That is reality. You are on this world on purpose doing an amazing job and it's difficult. And the support group knows it. And if you allow it, we'll light that match in an arena and sing your name. If for no other reason to make you know and understand you're here on purpose and you're loved and known by name. You're never alone. Number three is a habit. The world is always getting worse. <laughs> it never gets better. Did you notice? When you listen to television, it's always getting worse. No matter who is interviewed, it's always getting worse. What did your parents tell you? It's always getting worse. When you gather around and talk about the planet or the pieces and parts of your own society, you know, don't you? It's always getting worse. That means it's a downhill road, doesn't it? it means there is no hope, doesn't it? This is a habit. Somehow by saying those things, it enhances you in the old energy. Because others feel the same way. You have something to commiserate with, to. You can unite in that which is worsedom. <laughs> Everything is always getting worse. If you pipe up and say, well, yeah, but I think this is getting better. Your friends will look at you and say, you're wrong. What's wrong with you? You may even create a distance between you and your friends because things are not always getting worse for you. And that is the point. The old energy and the new energy, sometimes they clash. They don't come together. Sometimes it will take this for those to leave the conversation or wish you weren't there because you're not striking the doom that they want. Don't you know better? After all, the world's always getting worse. It isn't, dear ones. In fact, what is going on on this planet right now is a readjustment of light and dark, a reevaluation, a reframing of human consciousness that will take some time. In the process, we've discussed what the planet is going through, what the weather is going through, the preparation for a new consciousness, what it's going through. We've talked about the wild cards that have come in to stir things up for you. We've talked about many kinds of shocks to some who will say, see, it's worse and worse, and at the same time, you realize that these things, what they think are worse, is simply because they're changed from what they had changed from what they had. Sometimes change itself means that things are getting worse. What do you do? What can you do? Dear ones, all you can do is to drop the box that you were taught in, to understand and cognize the shift that is going on that was prophesied by the ancients is the most positive thing that has ever happened to humanity. You're part of it. You sit in it. You're the old soul who's going to experience it. So start to give it lip service. And if not to those friends who want to say it's getting worse, perhaps to your children, perhaps to others who will listen. If not, then perhaps to a tree. <laughs> Celebrating the fact that this planet is going through readjustment that may be difficult or seem like it's getting worse, but it is not. Celebrating light that hasn't happened here before. When light occurs and it hasn't happened, people are afraid. Because it's different. Because it has energy. Because it makes things look different. And that creates fear. It's easy to say things are getting worse. Dear ones, they're not. Not anymore. In the old paradigm, maybe so, but not now. In fact, the turnaround is just beginning. 
That's the solution. But I still ask you, watch for the habit. And if you're with friends you love and they have the habit, just don't chime in. You can say to yourself, every time they say it's getting worse, you can say, that's just what you think. In your mind, of course. <laughs> when they start talking about the itemization of what makes it worse, you can say, well, that's just what you think. In your mind, of course. And in that way, you sit there and you don't participate with them. But you can still be with them. That was number three. Number four perhaps is the hardest. It's a habit. And that is you let other human beings define you and control your life every day. Every day. Not understanding that you have completely total free will. Not to buy into what they say or fear the ramifications of what they say. They may do. It happens at home. It happens at work. It's society-wide. It has to do with not only the infrastructure, but who's in charge and who is not, whether it's at home or at work. And what someone says then affects you. Dear old soul, it's time to drop this completely and understand that no human being, no matter what they say, as they look in your eyes, can affect you. In the past, how many of you do you think got disease because of what others told you? Or what they put you through on a regular basis? And you died young and didn't have to because you bought into it. This is one of the greatest deceptions of an old energy. That other human beings can define you and affect you. If you let them, they will. Dear ones, if somebody starts to tell you things you don't want to hear or demeans you, and if it's an inappropriate situation and you can't leave, you do not have to respond. You can tune them out. You can shine your life. I am magnificent. This is not me. What they're saying is their issue coming right out of their mouth targeted at me. Did you ever think of that? Everything they say to you is their issue targeted at you. It has nothing to do with you. Can you disengage to the point where somebody can yell names at you and you are not feeling a thing? And if you can, congratulations. That's free choice. By the way, you'll live longer. Humans can cause other humans to die sooner and have disease. That's just the way of it. Because in an old energy, you buy into it, you fret about it, you fear, you worry. You cry and you don't understand, this is my boss. <laughs> then get another boss. That is what we're telling you. If it's happening at home, you're going to have to reframe. Your own resistance to changing it. Perhaps it's a habit that you can't break. Let me tell you something, that doesn't exist. In this new energy with the light, that doesn't exist. You can break any habit at this point in time. You have more power for this than any time. There's more light. There's more help. The wind is at your back. You can stand in front of a constant abusive person and not feel anything except being sorry they're having a bad day. Whatever they say, they're echoing who they are to you. And you don't have to buy into it. Many needed to hear this. Because that is where the crux, perhaps, of your discomfort right now is. That they will tell you you're nothing. Or demean you. And for some unbelievable reason in your magnificence, you believe it. That can change today. That is free choice. That's power. Real power. 
The last one, number five, is similar. Did you realize that when you center around groups of people and you start talking about other people or situations and you start complaining, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. Dear ones, I want you to reframe your, converse, your conversation. If you cannot say something positive, don't say it. I want you to watch what happens. Number one, your friends may stop being your friends. That's not an all bad thing. Find other friends who will speak more positive. But I want to tell you something that everything you say and every situation you set up with your complaints is heard by your cellular structure, your cellular structure. And in that it's destructive. This is an energy, dear ones, that you are telling your body and the field and everything around you. Almost like you're, you're ordering an energy that's going to come and be delivered to you. We've said that before. But complaining perhaps is one of the chief issues that will come back on you over and over. It's a negative attitude that will sow seeds of negativity that will be in you. Did you know that? Complaining is a habit. You say, my whole society complains. Is that the reason why you should complain? It is not. It truly is not. It does not make you a better person to join in that which is complaining. I told you these truths would be personal, and today they are. It is not up to you to rewrite anyone else's program but yours. I want you to think about that the next time you have an opportunity to complain about something that perhaps is complainable about. <laughs> what can you do? You can think positive about yourself, about the situation, about that which others would complain about, and look at the other humans involved who may very well not know the habit that they are in as well. Can you see God in everything? Can you see God in other human beings? If you complain about situations, could you understand why situations might be there? Or there's no control. Can you see the upside or the light in any of these? This is not a silver lining on a cloud. Dear ones, this is a paradigm shift of thinking and speaking and consciousness. That's what it is. So what we're telling you is it's a habit to create conversations that literally will make you have a shorter life. It's a habit. If your cellular structure is at peace with itself and your consciousness is at peace with itself, this is the secret to you think. It truly is. My partner says that many times he continues to wake up at three in the morning. He used to do that. And there was a laundry list of things to worry about. And now he wakes up because it's a habit. And the first thing he thinks about is, what are we going to worry about? <laughs> and then he realizes nothing. And he's asleep in 10 minutes. It's a habit, dear ones, that many of you have to this day. So if you wake up at 3 in the morning and you start your laundry list of worries, I want you to stand up. If you have to get out of bed and you say to anyone who will listen to you or not listen to you, not this time. Say it out loud. Not anymore. Because I have peace in my life over even the things that seem to be worried, filled subjects. I have peace over all of them. Is this doable? Oh, yes. 
the more you do this, the easier it gets until there's a time when you will wake up at three in the morning and realize there is nothing there that is too big for the love of God or the synchronicity in your life or for the old soul and you'll be asleep again immediately. And that's the secret and that's the solution. Understand your magnificence and your mastery, the can do of what is in your body, the control you have of you in any situation, you in any situation, and knowing you are totally and completely loved, worthy, and you belong here. That's the message for tonight. There is some rewriting to do, isn't there? There are some things that have to be shifted and changed as taught to you so long ago. If you're a young parent listening to this, I will tell you that everything that I have just given you is for your children. They'll see it in you. Depends on how you teach them. So no message like this would ever have to be given to them ever in their lives. Because after you are gone, they will remember mom and dad as being positive about the future and about what is possible with the human being. You can shape a life forever in your positiveness. And it's not just being positive. That's the reality of the light in the planet today. This message is given in love for a changing human being, for one that is trying to drop the old paradigms and habits, and will do so. I've been here before, dear ones. I've been in societies going through this before, dear ones. I know what you're going through. I know where this is going. More than doable. It creates new human beings. You will surprise yourself in what you can do that you couldn't do before. Because today is different than yesterday. I invite you to see the light in all things. And so it is.